Welcome to St. Patrick's. Our first hymn is Hymn 205. First reading today is from Acts 2.14. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me, the grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant, I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, Jerusalem. Hallelujah. A reading from the first letter of Peter. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you. Now on that same day two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing Jesus himself came near and went with them but their eyes were kept from recognizing him and he said to them what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Clopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? 
They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise to you Lord Christ. Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. In today's Gospel, we hear the story of Clopas and his companion walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus. They are making this journey on Easter Day, after they have heard the news that Jesus is not in his tomb, and there has been no body found. His body has disappeared. An angel has said that he has risen from the dead. As they make their way, a stranger joins them, and they enter into a discussion as they walk along. The stranger seems not to know what has happened, and Clopas is amazed that Given the astounding news and the awareness of all of Jerusalem of what has been going on the last week that this stranger hasn't heard all the news. And the stranger says, tell me about it. And so Clopas relates all of the information that he has, not knowing that he's speaking to Jesus himself. Finally, Jesus says, are you not aware that all that has happened has been predicted <clears throat> in the messages given to you by the prophets. And he goes on to explain to them that starting with Moses and the prophets, the word of God has always declared that the Messiah would come and that he would die and that he would be resurrected. When I was in college, one of the main ways I think I learned things was in my discussions with my classmates. Often we would discuss things we had learned in classes from our professors with one another and have long discussions on where those ideas and thoughts that the professors taught us were taking us. Sort of translating what we were taught in class and applying it to our lives. And I have shared with classmates from college my feeling about this, and they have affirmed that they too felt that that was an important part of their college experience. The dialogues 
that we all had with one another were in many ways as important as what we learned in our classes. The truth is that we all learn from one another that as we make our journey through life, one of the principal ways that we come to understand truth and the world around us is through the testimonies of other people by sharing knowledge. And when we finally seem to ascertain some knowledge of our own, we too become teachers for others. What was written in this gospel lesson was written about 40 years after the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. It was not written by a person who saw Jesus after the resurrection. Rather, it was relayed to him by those who had been witnesses to the risen Christ. The stories were written down by Luke so that others would come to know through the testimony of what he wrote that in fact the resurrection had occurred and that all the predictions of God made by Moses and the prophets had come true, had been fulfilled by God. It is through the sharing of testimony from the Gospels that we begin to understand the truth of the resurrection. And further, it is by the sharing of our own knowledge with others and hearing of their testimony in our present time that we too come to understand the truth of the resurrection. We all have to find our own way on this journey of life, find our way to knowing that God is that stranger who is walking with us. When Clopas and his companion and Jesus reach Emmaus, it is almost night, and so following the traditions of the Jewish faith, which require one to invite a stranger who does not have a home to come and stay with them and dine with them, Clopas invites Jesus to join them for dinner and to spend the night. When they sit down to dinner and Jesus breaks bread with them and blesses the bread, suddenly their eyes are opened and they see in this celebration of the Eucharist that Jesus is the stranger who is with them. And immediately once they come to this realization, Jesus disappears. They hurry on to Jerusalem to let the disciples know that they have seen the risen Christ. They testify to the other disciples that Jesus has been with them. The stranger that followed them on their journey was in fact God himself. The question here is, do we invite Jesus the stranger into our house? Do we invite Jesus into our lives? Do we, like Clopas, invite Jesus into our hearts? Do we recognize that Jesus is with us in our journey? Do we care? Do we want Jesus to be with us? This is the beginning of understanding that God is, in fact, that stranger and is among us. In our willingness and wanting to know God, we begin to successfully embark on that journey and come to realize that there are clues about the truth of God all around us. And that God continuously speaks to us through others and in his own voice through prayer to teach us about his truth and to join us in our journey through life. This is true. This is an experience that we all have and can have. We come together as a community of faith and celebrate the Eucharist as a way of uniting ourselves to the sacrifice that God has made on our behalf. 
When we share in the Eucharist, we strengthen our faith and we join with others who have invited Jesus into their hearts. We strengthen one another in faith and we experience the reality of the risen Christ. It is in this community of faith and in the breaking of bread that we come to know that God is with us. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, be with us in these days of turmoil and fear. Help us to see that you are with us always. Help us to see that you are calling us to become a part of your heavenly kingdom. And help us to welcome you into our hearts and minds and souls. And help us to see that you are the lonely and homeless stranger that walks the journey of life with us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the words of our faith as they are written in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy you came to our help, so that in seeking you might we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy, to fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new, that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring fulfillment, the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing to them to be the holy gifts of, for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body, one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. And grant that we may find our inheritance with Patrick and all the saints, 
who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.